Good day, everybody. Steve from Mud Ducks Four Wheel Drive Touring. Hope everybody's well. This week's video, I'm going for a drive. I have a three-day weekend, being Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and unfortunately, Karen has to work, so she's gone off to work, and I've taken off. Now, I took off, I don't know, an hour and a half ago from uh, home, maybe a bit longer. So um, I'm heading out basically up to the Pilliga region. I've never been in that region before, so I've got a, a few hours of uh, driving ahead of me. Uh, um, I have no idea what to expect or what to find or what to look at, so I'll just take you along for the ride. Now, I actually should have been further up the highway than I am, but unfortunately, one of the bush barriers decided to blow off. Uh, which has not happened before, but uh, anyway, I did half a dozen laps of the particular section of road where it blew off and I can't find it, so uh, I'm a bush barrier short. It's a bit of a nuisance, but anyway, uh, that's how it is. So uh, I lost probably 35 minutes uh, trying to find it. Anyway, it doesn't matter, it's not like there's a time frame, so uh, I'll just cruise along and see what we can find as we go along. Got a uh, couple of new things to play with this weekend, well one new thing in particular, so um, we'll show you that when we uh, get to it. Okay guys, I'll um, save you looking at my ugly mug just talking while I'm looking down the road because that's a bit boring for you and I will see you in a while. rugged north, to the beautiful south, to the centre, east, west, doesn't matter where, the four wheel drive tips and tricks and travel and information, you have come to the right place. Come for a ride with us at Mud Ducks Four Wheel Drive Tour. It's getting seriously wet. Well, I just stopped at Battery Rock Rest area, which is a place I often go to. Here is the bush brow that's disappeared. Uh, unfortunately, not much I can do with that. Anyway, I'm going to grab a drink out the fridge. But this is what I'm here to play with. I'm finally going to use the travel buddy now. I've got all this tea towel and stuff stuffed in here to stop it from making noises while you're driving and it seems to work now obviously now i'm going to have to put up with some noises while i'm driving but uh, yeah, at least it doesn't rattle while i'm driving the way it is so hopefully i can put you here somewhere Probably not facing the right way. There you go. Right, hopefully you can hear me okay. So, 
I'm just going to turn it on. I'm not, I'm not going to have it quite at 200. Now, I should have probably pre-warmed this, but I'll look at it in a couple of hours' time. Uh, it's not stupidly late. It's a bit after 8 o'clock, so I reckon it at um, about 10. I'll have another look. So I'm just going to go to the old faithful pies. These came out of the freezer this morning, but they've been in the fridge, so they should be okay. Actually, I've changed my mind. I'll crank it back up to 200. Now I've got no idea how to store my trays so they don't rattle. So I'm going to stick, stick one under the sleeping bag here. It doesn't want to go under there. Yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. Second one I'll probably put inside somewhere. Underneath some gear. So it shouldn't rattle. Anyway, we'll see how that treats us. In a couple of hours time, I'll set my timer on my phone when I get going again and we'll go from there. Oh, we'll pull up in Coonabarabran. It's been a bit over two hours since I put the pies on. So I reckon they're cooked. It smells like a bakery in the truck, so I'll give you a look. Now, the tray's hot, obviously, so I put on a glove. Cause... Sauce on these, bit of Barbie. I suppose if I showed it here, it'd be better, wouldn't it? So uh, we'll go and have a go at them. All right, this little park is off the Newell Highway, just as you go through Cuna Barabran. About to go out of town. There's a park here. There's some toilets. Seems like a good a place as any to have a feed. So that's what we'll do. Got to put me stuff down. Stuff everywhere. All right. A little river down there. Looks a bit brown at the present, but that's the way it goes. Right, I'm going to have my pies, so I'm fairly confident that they're pretty cooked. Well, we're in Barradine, New South Wales, and we've come to the Pilligut Forest Discovery Centre. So I'm going to go and have a look at that and see what they can tell me about where I'm going into the Pilliga. So I won't film just yet because I don't want to walk in there and frighten everybody at all. Give you a look in a sec. All right, you walk in the front door of the Pilliga Forest Info Centre, Forest Discovery Centre. I'll get it right. First thing you see is a little office behind the windows where you see very attractive National Parks people. So that's always good. And then we wander in here to the main part of the building. There's a more detailed map of where I'm looking at going. So I'll probably get one of those there, not too dear. And this is the Discovery Centre and all the things to do with the Pilliga. So if you come into Baradine, it's well signposted and you can come and have a look. Lots of indigenous history, info on the walls. Obviously his timber was a big thing at some stage, a big saw blade there. So 
Uh, it's only a very quick look, guys. You need to come and check it all out for yourself. So, it's an interactive display. You push LEDs for different tracks and stuff. So, it's not a bad little centre. Lots of different stuffed animals to give you an idea of what's in the park. So it's, it's pretty good. As I said, I won't wrap it on for too long about all this here, guys. You'll get to see it all for yourselves when you come up here. So I figured I'd come in here first and get the info and then head up to where I'm going. Because it might be reflecting back too much. What if I turn that off? Oh, it's still reflecting a bit. Anyway, you get that. Hopefully you can see that. That is the general area I'm going into all in there. So that is the very short wander around the Pilliga Forest Discovery Centre. Okay, I've just left the Pilliga Forest Discovery Centre, which is in Wellington Street in Barradine. I'm just turning back onto the highway. So if you come out to the Discovery Centre, you turn off the highway coming from Kuna Barabran to the left, go a few hundred metres up, and you find the Discovery Centre. When you come back down again to go out to where we're going, come back down the way you came in, turn left, back onto the highway and go that way. So that's Baradine, and I'll show you more of it in due course. So we're airing down, that's what the road looks like off in front of us, so I haven't seen the other cars yet, that should be interesting. Holding on to what I know to everything I've learned, what is real and fabricated, what is wrong, what is my problem, what can I get out of this world that I created, fighting the storms in my head, don't know where I have been, I'm alone. No one to turn to, no one understands This shit's too complicated Away, and I feel like I am someone else Away, and I feel like I don't know myself, no Away, and I feel like I don't know my name And I don't want to live this way I don't wanna keep on wasting all Down in my head, I'm losing the memory And if you could know, yeah, if I could show in it because I reckon too many people don't drop their tyres down. Uh, I've let mine down it's quite pleasant. I'm guessing there's not a lot of hard four wheel driving in here but I don't know. So I'm just going to work my way to probably where the sculptures campground is or something like that and then um, see what the afternoon brings. 
whether I can get to see any other attractions or uh, or not. Anyway, this is the, the main road. And as you can see, it's not too bad for gravel. And what have we got here? Sculptures round to the right. They're 25 k's away, so a little bit to go yet. Oh, see you there probably. Now I've been following Top Crossing Road and I've come to the sign down here on the right. It says Sculptures in the Scrub, 1.5k. It's pretty easy to see. I've travelled 34k's from the Discovery Centre. But the big thing that makes it fairly apparent as to where you are is this sign here, which is Yamandi Gar Nama Mabur Gar Nama Ural Dandy Gorge. All those words I can't say. Now that's a fairly big looking structure. So, it should make it fairly obvious as to where to turn. So, of course, I parked the cruiser there just for the obligatory photo. All right, we'll see you in there, I'd say. Well, we've made it to the Sculptures Campground. Now, first thing I do is set my solar panel up, so I've already done that. I'm going to set the rest of the camp up over here so I'll give you a look at all of that when that's all done that look harder than it was that's camp pretty well set up i have got to put the bedding in the swag I'm going to sit down and have a drink and relax for a little while Right guys, it's a bit after five in the afternoon. I've left, given it time to cool down a bit. It's been really close to 30 degrees today. So, I'm gonna take on this walking track. I've got my water, got some supplies. It's only three Ks. So, we'll go and have a look. Well, haven't gone very far into it, and we come across some naturally occurring steps. So, up we go. Well, we've come across the first of the sculptures. These ones are called Scrub Spirits. It's a little bored to telling you how all that was done, or what they're for, and they're looking out over that view. It's not bad, eh? So, uh, yeah, pretty impressive. That's sculpture one. Now, it's not very far into it. It'd be lucky to be, I don't know, maybe 300 metres. Feels further, but isn't. Now, this is all like a big viewing area you can sort of sit here and look out over that lookout 
this is another sculpture thing. Probably something to do with those, but it's uh, a bit different. And in the rocks laid in here, they've carved different patterns. I'm not even sure they're rocks, they might be concrete pads, but the indigenous people's heritage here has allowed all this to be here and it all blends in with their culture. So that's all pretty cool. All right, we'll move on to the next one, I think. Well, here we are at the second sculpture. This one's called First Lesson. Looks like a tribal band's son sitting on his shoulders and he's got a boomerang in his hand. This is all the explanation here. Get later the view. Oh, that is really nice. That is really, really pretty. Right, now we're on to the third ones. These look interesting. I'll read what they're all about in a minute. But very smooth, really smooth marble. That one looks like marble. This one's obviously granite been polished, rough, polished, really nice. I'm sure they have a meaning. Yandu, Yandu. There's all the details on how it was made and what it's about. So, another one with a pretty reasonable view few little trees growing up now. Maybe national parks will cut some of those down later. Anyway, they're pretty good. As you're walking along, you see this seat, but it's got some handprints on it. Then you realise it's a bit of a sculpture in itself. That's sort of a snake, and it's all carved. So that's like an extra one. I don't think it's part of a sculpture, I think it's just an extra one. This one is a very photographed sculpture from what I've seen. obviously has great significance. Looks like it's carved out of the natural stone that's in the area. So all the tourist info has a picture of that one. So <sighs> connections, Yoala. I think that's it. Anyway, here's the info again. It's a bit beaten up, that info, a little bit hard to read some of it, but yeah. And it's again got a pretty of a view. Like when you, before you quite get to it, you just stop here and get a later view of that escarpment. There's a gorge down below us, which is Dan Dry Gorge. I'll walk out here a little bit. If Kaz was here, she'd be blown up. But it's a pretty good view, isn't it? Not bad at all. Anyway, we'll move on. 
got a bit to go yet, so we better keep going. Well, looks like we're coming up to the fifth lot. These ones look like they're like a mosaic kind of thing. There's some really clever patterns in that. Very, very good. A lot of work in those, I think. Better have a look at the info about them. Respect mother. Fair enough. Ah, I'm getting it now. Pretty, pretty impressive works, these. Definitely worth a look if you get out of here, guys, for sure. But as I said, I must press on. Walking around in this gorge, well not at the bottom yet, but look at these rock formations. Little caves. It's pretty impressive. Right, well I do have to show you something. I'm down in the bottom of the gorge. I don't know how you'll see it. Up there is the sculpture of the Aboriginal guy with the sun on his back. So, hopefully you can see that. Right guys, well, it's getting close to seven o'clock. In fact, I think it's a bit after seven. It'll be dark in an hour or so. I've got much to show you. There's no fires because we're in a total fire ban still. So I'm about to cook myself some tea and probably have an early night. So I think I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Good morning. It's Sunday, it's around 7 a.m. Had a good sleep. Waking up, it's a bit overcast this morning. But I put up my anti rain tarp last night because it was thundery and stuff. And of course, because I put it up, no rain. So I'm just going to rip that down and start packing up everything while I'm making coffee and breakfast and so on. So I won't <coughs> make you sit through me packing everything up. But uh, I'll do all that and then we'll talk to you in a little while. Okay, I've packed up camp. And as you can hear, the truck's running. I like to start the truck before I get too excited. Now, always go for a walk around your campsite to see if you've left any mess. And if you have, pick it up. But we're pretty safe here. So all is fine. I've already done all my underbonnet checks this morning. So ready to go. Oh, and it did rain on me while I was packing up my swag. So I was lucky I got it pretty well done before it rained too bad. So, I'm a bit hot and sweaty again, but anyway, they get that, it's a bit humid. But I've got an air-conditioned truck to sit in, so we'll get going and see what else the park has to offer. Left the campsite, just had a chat with the campers next door before I headed away. Tough bus night. Because I got rained on, I didn't worry about having breakfast, so I've thrown some fish pieces and some potato gems in the travel buddy, and I'll have those in a couple of hours' time. Now you've got to go back out the same way we came in a little bit here. But I'm gonna go back to the new highway and check out the sandstone caves which is an aboriginal site it's not side posted from the highway so you have to know how to get there so uh, well, i'm going to go there and have a look at that 
but then I'm heading up to where I'm supposed to camp tonight, which is at the Salt Cave, and I'll have a look around that area. Now, hopefully, today's predicted thunderstorms have um, been and gone. Hopefully, they're the ones I've already experienced, but if not, um, I'll make decisions tonight as to whether I actually camp at the campground. Well, the weather certainly hasn't improved. I've driven over to the salt caves. Oh, sorry, the sandstone caves, I get it. Anyway, I put my food on before I left. I've just checked it and it's ready to eat, so I'm going to have a feed. That's why I've got the awning out, because it is raining. So I'm just going to have a feed here and then I'm going to put the wet weather gear on and go for a look around the, uh, the caves. But I might as well have some brekkie. Potato gems. I thought I'd quickly talk about the travel buddy. I know a lot of you guys have got them, but um, this is my first trip away with it. What I found fantastic so far is these metal trays. That one's just sitting there. Got one in here. They're made by Somerville Metalworks in Victoria. They're a food grade stainless tray, so you can use them. To cook in immediately which is exactly what i did i just hauled them up and uh, put the fish in one the potato gems in the other they also make a full height tray which i've left at home which fills up the whole travel buddy so uh, you can do roasts and stuff in that but uh they're brilliant they're a little bit expensive but you know they're made in australia by a company in victoria and yeah, you know, they fit really nicely I'm going to do my pies in them next rather than just on the tray. That way, I made a bit of a mess in the travel buddy yesterday. The cheese came out of some of the pies and burnt in there. So once it's cooled down properly and I'm at home, I've got to clean it again properly. So I'm going to try and use the trays for pretty well everything in the future. But uh, so far, the thing is a winner. I haven't cooked any food this weekend on anything other than the travel buddy yet. I had plans to... Um, to do some cooking last night, but by the time I'd had me meals throughout the day from travel, I actually wasn't hungry. So I just had a little bit of nibbles and that was it. Anyway, this is not a travel buddy ad. Just thought I'd let you know what I think of it so far. This is his first trip away and uh, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, if you've been thinking about getting one uh, and you're not sure, Go for it. You can't lose. Cost you a few bob to get all the extra trays and stuff, but uh, realistically, once you've got it, you've got it, eh? All right, I'm going to pack up all this stuff, and I've got a wet walk to do to continue my uh, journey to the sandstone cave. So we'll see you out there. Well, this is the sign at the entry to the sandstone caves. So... It is raining on me. Right, we'll go for a wander through there anyway. Got me jumper, me wet weather jacket on, got a hat on today. 1.7 Ks. Some other people have just left here. So I'll be pretty well in here on my own. Well, on the way to a sandstone cave, it's probably 
don't know, two or three hundred meters in is a dunny. So at least the national parks have provided you a toilet. I didn't think there'd be one. Well, there you go. Funny part is, is you're a good couple of hundred meters into the walk. So it's not just a stroll from the car park to go to a toilet. Anyway, there you go. All right, we'll, we'll keep going. I just thought that was something interesting. This is only, I don't know, maybe be lucky to be 100 metres from those toilets. Uh, I'm assuming there's some stuff to see here. But I don't know. But there's, oh yeah, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. There's a very, very fine look like quite old scratchings that would have been done by the indigenous so, trying to see if there's any more obvious ones rain's not letting up so, anyway here's what it is out here in the bush you just got to live with these things haven't you That tells you how the boulder in the cave got there. And no, yeah, um, you may be able to see this. I'm not sure. Uh, you can see big carvings and grooves in the stone where they've sharpened tools and things. Yeah, that's what that's about. So, certainly a, uh, a significant place to be indigenous. Wouldn't be surprised. Didn't bring me a light. Should have brought me a light. I'd be surprised there's some kind of engravings up there. Anyhow, we'll move on. Oh, well, there's definitely some goings on in here. Not so much artwork by the look of it, but there is some very faint, could be drawings. But there's certainly areas here where they've used this to carve stuff out. So, yeah, a lot of that. I don't know if there's too much more up that way, but yeah, there's definitely signs of the original inhabitants of the area where they've been doing stuff so that's pretty cool well, we've taken shelter in another cave but here's a bit of natural erosion these caves are drip like this for I don't know how many years thousands and that drip was carving that rock out not good from that angle but it's very obvious you can see that drip carving that rock out so come down here that's it there carving away the rain's getting heavier so I'm pretty well going to leg it back to the car I think I'm sure there's more in here to see but it's getting seriously wet. So I'm going back to the car and uh, this could be very close to being the end of this trip. Hey guys, as you can see, I've made it back to the truck. I've just released the water from the awning. I'm pretty well gonna pack this up and head home. I've got air up in the rain and I'm gonna dry up and I think I'm going home. So I'll talk to you from the car in a little while, but I'm not going to make you go through watching me air up and stuff. 
Now go get a towel and change some clothes because I'm a bit wet. All right, guys, see you in a while. As previously mentioned, I've aired up, I've packed everything up, I've changed my shirt because I was rigged wet uh, after all that rain and stuff. I left my shorts on, but I'm sitting on a towel to keep the seat dry, even though I've got wet seat seat covers. Uh, it's reasonably warm in here, I've got the temperature in the truck set at 21, so it's not too painful. Anyway, I'm heading home because I had a look on the bomb and the storms are definitely around the rest of the day. Rain everywhere. My swag managed to get rolled up dry this morning, so rather than just camp for the sake of camping in the rain, I decided to pull the pin again, so I know it sounds a bit soft, but I just figure I'm six hours from home, or five and a half hours from home, something like that, so you know, why, why deal with that and deal up with, with what I've got to do in the morning with it raining and stuff, you know, when I can just go home, so anyhow, the trip's a bit shorter than I wanted to be, but what can you do? So hopefully you didn't mind this one. Uh, really do hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, throw a like on it. It really helps the channel. If you're new here, consider subscribing. Click the notification bell. If you do subscribe, you'll know when a new clip goes up. And to be old heads, thanks again as always for taking the time out of your day to watch one of my clips. You guys... Uh, one of the reasons I keep doing this. So, uh, all the best, everybody. Cheers for now, and we'll see you on the next one.